Welcome back everybody to the Cinepax YouTube channel. Today we're going to be inside of DaVinci Resolve making these freeze frame whiteout effects just like the ones you see on the screen right now. If you guys want to follow along with the assets that we'll be using, you can download a free sample pack on the Cinepax website. Just head on over to the website, go to the free pack section, and search for the whiteout free sample pack. Then all you got to do is put in some of your information, we won't use any of it, and download the pack. Once you guys have the pack downloaded, just take that folder and drag it on into this area right here in your media pool. And as you can see, I've already done that. And here's the free sample packs that we'll be using today. In the free pack, you got this paper texture, you got the smiley face, and you got this scribble that we're going to be using right now. Now the paper textures here and inside the full pack as well, you'll see the paper textures are oriented up and down. Now whenever I drag them into the timeline, I personally don't like having to grab them and manually flip them around every time I want them to cover the full screen. So pro tip right here, double click one of the assets so you can view it right here, select all of them, and then inside your media pool, you can actually edit the position and transform of these. So let's change the rotation angle to something like 90 degrees. And then I'll even scale the zoom so it covers the entire screen. And just like that, now when I drag it onto the timeline, it's already oriented the correct way. Okay, so let's start with our first clip. We're gonna let this play through and then I wanna tap his head twice and freeze right here. So we're gonna create a freeze frame. To do that, control B to create a cut and then let's press the arrow to go frame one forward and press control B again. So now we have this one frame here that we want to extend. To freeze it and extend it out, press shift R and now that frame is frozen. We have created a freeze frame clip. So we can just drag it out like so, and it's going to be frozen for the entire clip, and then resume. Perfect. Let's begin by dragging in our paper texture right here. And now that's pretty cool and dandy and all, but let's change our composite mode to add. And there we go. That's looking a lot cooler. You can use whatever blend mode you want, but I'm gonna use add and bring down the opacity. Okay. Sweet. So let's see, how long do I want this to play? Uh, a little bit longer than that. Let's extend out our freeze frame to about there. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this whole clip, right click it, and create a new compound clip. These are gonna get messy. They're gonna start creating, being made in your media pool. It's always a good idea to throw all of them into a folder. Um, but I'm not gonna do that today because I'm too lazy. <laughs> so now let's go ahead and edit this compound clip. Right click on it and click open in timeline and make sure you can have this little button selected here. That way it'll create tabs so you can easily go back to your main timeline, which is right here for me. So let's go ahead and just drag this face onto our timeline here and we can just scale it down. Make sure you have your transform tool selected and let's just put it right here on his face and we can just rotate it like so and there. Just like that, you already have effects started and it's looking really cool. I like it a lot. But the most iconic part of this pack is using the scratch effect here. So here's how we're going to use that. So we're going to outline this person here. So let's have this first line right here. It comes in and we're just going to drag it, scale it down and scale it down a little more so I can get this handle. So all I'm going to do is duplicate this line and trace it around his entire body. So let's go to, let's go to the end of this clip. So right here on this frame it stops tracing. So I'm going to press M with this clip selected. And what's that, what that is going to do is make that clip, if we expand this out slightly right here, you're going to see that marker shows up. So now when we hold down Alt and drag this out to duplicate it, we can just make sure it's automatically attached to the end of the clip. That way the transition will be seamless. So let's drag this second clip out to right here. And now you'll notice, since we lined it up with the marker, which is the end, it just starts tracing right away. Perfect. I'm just going to go ahead, I'll scroll this down. I'm gonna drag this up and create another one. And this one I'll take here, I'll rotate it. I see the start of it right there. And then maybe go a little forward and scale it down. Perfect. And then with that, all I'm going to do is continue this process until the entire person is traced. There are also different shapes inside the full pack, which I'll probably use here. If we use the scratches, you'll see that there's curves and there's different shapes that we can use to make the process faster. 
which is what I'll probably go ahead and do since I have the full pack. All right, and I have completed our outline, and as you can see, it traces the person. But there's a few things to notice. First of all, it starts disappearing towards the end of the trail, and second of all, it's really slow. We want to speed it up, definitely. So let's fix our first problem by selecting all these. Hold down Alt to copy this and drag out a duplicate. And what we're going to do is freeze frame these. Now, when you press Shift R, it's going to freeze the frame of whatever is currently visible on screen for the selected clips. So for this first one here, I'm going to go to the end of the clip, press Shift R, then I'm going to go to the next one, Shift R, 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 perfect. And now you can see it has frozen all of these. Perfect. I'll just drag these back so they connect and I can drag these out for as long as I want. And it looks like I missed one here, so I'll duplicate this one, press Shift R on it and drag this out. And to sum all these up, I'm running out of space here. I can't select everything at once. This is crazy. All right, we'll go right here and select all of these now at once and press shift and back bracket. And there we go. Now everything has been trimmed down and will stay. Now let's fix the second problem, which is speed. So select all of these, create another compound clip within our compound clip. And now if we press control R, this time that's gonna bring up the retime controls. So we can just Put our cursor right here and drag this down to speed up our clip and now it's playing much much faster i can even speed it up even more there we go and let's drag this towards the front so it all happens at once nice i like that that's fun it still disappears too early now that i've sped it up so we'll just create another we'll just cut it again and shift r to freeze frame this compound clip and since it's frozen now we can stretch it out perfect so once you have it all customized in your main timeline now, we can come back and just add a cool little transition. So just click on it, add a super quick dynamic zoom, little uh, Ken's burn effect there. We can go ahead and manually edit this, that way it's not as fast because it likely will be fast. So let's bring it back to our main transform tool and let's press play. And okay, cool, however, it started, it glitched out. It's starting the wrong way. So go back to our dynamic zoom and click swap. So now it'll be zooming in. There we go. I like that. Cool. And let's add a little flash here to transition to this. So you can do whatever you want, but let's go to our effects. Let's go to toolbox and type in adjustment clip. Perfect. Drag that over this. Drag it down a little bit and let's add a glow, I believe. Glow. Uh, under open effects, drag that on. So one frame before our transition, we're gonna click effects, we're gonna keyframe the shine threshold and the spread. And then we're gonna go a few frames in. So once this happens, we're gonna bring our shine threshold really low and bring up the spread, or maybe bring the spread down. No, we'll bring the spread up. And then we'll go a few frames forward, bring the spread all the way down, and then a few more frames and the shine threshold all the way uh, we'll, we'll, we won't touch the shine threshold. I think we actually need to touch the global blend a little bit more. So this time I'll go ahead to the few frames before, bring the blend all the way down, keyframe it, go a few frames forward, bring the blend all the way up, the front, go a few frames again, and bring the blend all the way down, if that makes sense. So now with those effects combined, we get a cool flash right before it cuts to our transition, our animation, I mean. And to finish off this transition, let's actually add a sound effect. This pack includes sound effects in the full pack, which we're just going to use real quick. I'm just going to drag this in. Oh, that's sick. I like that. That sounded really cool. After watching this a few times, however, I wish that this was a different color. So I'm going to show you how to change that. And with it open here, we're going to go to our color page. And let's try to find it in our clip pool here since everything gets thrown around. Right there, there it is. So all we gotta do is we just gotta mess with our offset. So if I wanna make it red, I'm gonna drag this into the red a little bit. Um, and then I'm gonna try to bring up the saturation, show it's a little more prominent. And then I'm going to bring down our contrast. So the reds 
are much more violent. There we go. So I'm going to make it more, I'm looking for a dark red. Bring a contrast. Contrast down. And then bring up the saturation. And now we've got a really dark sort of red. We can bring the green all the way. We can, let's just hit zero on both of these. There we go, so now it's only red. Perfect, let's go back to our edit page. And then I'm gonna change the composite mode to difference. And by doing that, we get this really cool blending mode. And I think that looks really sick. I'm much more happier with that. Look at that, sweet. All right, I'm here in another one that we're creating right now. And I did the exact same thing, but I wanna show you guys how you can make an awesome 3D effect, which uh, by basically uh, animating the transform of each layer individually. So I'm just using the letters here to create a little title here. And once I finish that, let me show you how to make this awesome effect. Let's look for a U right here, drag that in. And perfect, run, very creative. All right, so I'm gonna take all those in the title and I'm gonna right click and I'm going to create a new compound clip and create, all right, perfect. Now, as you can see here, I have compound clipped and grouped um, different elements together that I want them to be separate. So I grouped all the dollar signs together and the guns. Um, the title here is its own layer. Um, and then the paper transition and the actual footage itself are its own layer. So let's go to the, my first clip right here. I'm going to keyframe it, go to the end of it, and let's just zoom in a little bit, like right there. Then we're gonna go to the paper texture, do the same thing, go to the end, transform it, but maybe a little less this time. That way they are separate. So they look like they're on separate layers. Let's, let's maybe just, Let's have the texture go faster, how about that? Perfect, okay. Then we'll go to the next layer, keyframe it once again. Keyframe, go to the end, and manually adjust it right there. Then we'll go to our scratches. Zoom in, and then take our two compound clips, compound, Zoom out and let's just a little bit. There we go. And then our last one, which is our title. And have it maybe go like that. So now when we go back to our timeline, let's even drag over this adjustment clip. So we get a cool flash. Bam, we get an awesome transition like that. Okay, I went ahead and did one more clip doing exactly what I showed you before and a few more effects and I'm pretty happy with what we came out with and I hope you guys are happy with what you guys were able to make as well. I hope this tutorial helped and you guys enjoyed messing with the assets. If you guys want more assets, make sure to check out cinepacks.com. Use the code SAMPLE15 to get 15% off any order that you buy there. And as usual, make sure you guys have a great time editing. I hope this video was helpful to you and good luck creating epic videos. Bye guys, have a good one.